My name is Nish McRae. I'm the founder and executive director of Bajika, a nonprofit organization where we bring our students' ideas to life using STEM. In this video, we'll use Tinkercad to bring a student's idea to life by creating a 3D object. In the process, we will learn how to use Tinkercad to create 3D objects, connect objects to each other, measure objects, and review connections between objects. Before we begin, let's review a few terms we'll need to get started. Computer-aided design, or CAD, is a type of software that allows us to build 3D objects using our computers. A CAD model is a 3D object designed in CAD software. Examples of CAD software include Autodesk's Tinkercad and Fusion 360, which allow us to create 3D objects of our ideas. A 3D printer uses materials such as plastic from recycled bottles and plants in order to print 3D objects and bring CAD models to life. Now that we have a few terms under our belt, let's get started. For this video, I've selected an idea from a student of mine, Calvin, to bring to life. Here is what he wrote to us. Hey, Miss Nisha, my name is Calvin. My almost six-year-old brother Ezekiel is all about outer space. He even made his own space helmet out of foam and cardboard. He also loves watching TV shows with knights and ninjas. His birthday is coming up, and I really want to make something cool, combining space with his other interests. So, I decided to surprise him with a special helmet worthy of a space knight. Now, how do I get started? Aw, how thoughtful of Calvin to surprise his brother with the custom helmet. Given all of this information, which we'll call design parameters, I think we have enough information to begin brainstorming. Just so you know, brainstorming is the process of coming up with ideas. We can start our brainstorming by mashing up various ideas to make something new. One of his favorite TV shows is influenced by the medieval age, specifically knights. So let's tweak our design based on that. Perhaps a knight's helmet, which includes a type of face shield called a visor. Now, let's add a ninja-inspired element. Once we have an idea, creating a simple sketch is a great place to start visualizing and brainstorming our helmet design. We can then use Tinkercad to quickly and easily create a CAD model, as well as add more detail to our design. In Tinkercad, we will be making a simple CAD model of our helmet design using a few basic shapes and tools. Later on, we'll add a few bells and whistles to our CAD model. Now, let's get started. Let's start with the base of the cap, which is a simple dome-like shape. We'll select a half sphere from the basic shapes toolbar. We'll modify the half sphere into an oval shape on the work plane with these dimensions. We need two of these, so we'll create a duplicate. This can be done by either selecting the shape and then the duplicate and repeat button, or by holding down the Control D keys. We'll first make sure the shape is selected and then click the Hole button in the Shape toolbar to transform the duplicate shape into a hole and change the whole shape dimensions. The next steps are to select both shapes on our work plane and use the Align tool to overlap both shapes with the whole shape inside the solid shape. We'll align it so that both models overlap. Here, we'll select both shapes on the work plane and use the Group tool or Control shift g to create a hollowed single shape. We'll select the new shape on the work plane and use the Duplicate and Repeat tool to create two. Now, we'll drag a box shape onto the work plane and change the dimensions as shown. We can turn the box shape into a hole by selecting the hole button in the shape toolbar. Next, we'll select both shapes on our work plane and use the align tool to overlap. The hole in this design should run right down the center of the oval shape. Let's select the shape with the hole running through it and modify its dimensions. Then, we can change the other duplicated shape into the following dimensions. We'll select Hide to save the objects and clear the workspace. Now, we can get started on the next component of the model. First, we'll select and drag a cylinder shape to the work plane from the Basic Shapes toolbar. 
Now it's time to modify the shape into an oval cylinder on our work plane with the following dimensions. Then we'll duplicate the shape to create two shapes and turn one of the two shapes into a hole. Now let's modify the whole shape to the following dimensions. Hmm. Selecting both shapes and using the Align tool, let's overlap them and then group them together using the Group tool. See how the cylinder is hollow? Let's select and drag a box to the work plane from the Basic Shapes toolbar. Here, we'll modify the box using the Shape toolbar and modify the following dimensions. Next, let's convert the shape into a hole using the Hole tool. Let's overlap the rectangular box-shaped hole into a hollowed cylinder in a way that creates an opening width-wise across the hollowed cylinder. We'll select both shapes on the work plane and use the Group tool to merge them together. Selecting Hide lets us save the objects and clear the workspace. Once we have our base complete, let's start on our visor. To start, we can select and drag a roof shape to the work plane from the Basic Shapes toolbar, and then rotate the shape 90 degrees so that it's facing upward. Let's rotate once more, 135 degrees counterclockwise, and then modify the roof with the following dimensions. Now we can duplicate the shape to create two. We can then select one of the roof shapes and turn it into a hole using the Hold tool, as well as change the dimensions as shown here. Next, we can select both shapes on our work plane and use the Align tool to overlap both shapes, and then select and group both shapes. Then we'll duplicate the shape to create three identical shapes. Now that we have three identical shapes, let's select the first duplicate and modify its dimensions. Then let's rotate the shape 45 degrees counterclockwise. Next, let's select the second duplicate on our work plane and change its dimensions as shown here. And then like with the other shapes, we'll rotate this shape 45 degrees counterclockwise. Let's repeat this process with the third duplicate on the work plane using these dimensions. Now we'll hide the objects and clear the workspace once more. For our final component, let's create a screw to hold our visor. We'll select a cylinder shape from the basic shapes toolbar and change the dimensions as shown. Then let's duplicate the shape to create three cylinders and change one of the cylinders to have these dimensions. Our next step is to modify another one of the cylinders into the following measurements. We can then select both previously changed shapes and align and group them. Notice how it looks like a bolt screw? Uh-huh. We have all our parts, so it's time to assemble. Let's select hide to reveal the previous components for final assembly. As we assemble, we can use our view cube to make sure our components are touching each other properly. We don't want any of our components to end up floating in space, pun intended. Just to be safe, we can use the ruler tool in the top right corner to ensure our components are exactly where we want them to be, as well as measure. Let's place the ruler at the edge of our helmet base. If we want to change the type of measurement we want, like the distance from one object endpoint to another, we can click the circle at the corner of the ruler. After some patience, a few tweaks here and there, maybe a few color edits like a ninja color theme and using our ruler tool, you should have a little something like this. I think Ezekiel and Calvin are gonna be so excited once they see our Tinkercad model. Now that you know how to create a model in Tinkercad, you can create some basic models. In our next video, we'll continue our design process by gathering feedback and tweaking our Tinkercad model.
In addition, we'll show you how we can use our Tinkercad model in Fusion 360 in order to take our design to the next level. Until next time, build, make, learn.